In this morning's Health Watch, testing for cervical cancer. Thanks to widespread use of the pap smear, death rates from cervical cancer have been cut by more than half over the last 30 years. Now researchers say incorporating a different test could save even more lives. Medical correspondent and OBGYN, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, has this for us this morning. And it's a good thing that you're our resident medical uh, correspondent because this is really is your wheelhouse. Right. This, is, this is your specialty. Uh, talk to us about the findings here. It looks at two different tests for cervical cancer. Exactly. And to clarify, Erica, we're talking here about the difference between a pap smear, which is the widespread means to screen for cervical cancer. That test looks at the actual cells from the cervix to see if they are becoming abnormal, and an HPV test, which is a DNA test to detect the presence of the human papillomavirus, or HPV. We know that the vast majority of cervical cancers are caused, in fact, by this sexually transmitted disease, HPV. The good news is most people who are exposed to HPV clear this virus on its own. And by the age of 50, Erica, over 50% of women have been exposed to HPV. This is incredibly widespread. Which sounds great. So that, that HPV test, though, being a DNA test, sounds like it would be far more accurate. So is, is the pap smear not need it anymore? Well, again, brewing controversy, but we've known for some time that this DNA test for the human papillomavirus is actually superior to the, to the pap smear. It does not mean that women do not need to go to their gynecologist. We have to make that crystal clear. But in fact, this particular latest study looked at over 300,000 women and really found that those who were at high risk of developing cervical cancer, the HPV test was superior to the pap smear, especially in predicting which women may progress to develop cervical cancer in the next five years. You said it's really important to make sure you still have an annual visit with your gynecologist, but do you still need this annual pap test? Well, the pap smear guidelines have been evolving over the past several years and they are variable and different for every woman based on their age group and whether or not they're pregnant, if they have any, any weakened immune system or medical problems. But the three biggest categories that women should really know about for pap smears are the following. Number one, the first pap smear is done at age 21 not before. You have no idea how many patients I see who get pap smears before then. It is wrong. It is not the national guidelines. The second group is women 21 to 29 years of age. They can have pap smears every two years, providing that their past pap smears have been normal. And women over 30 need to get a pap smear and really should get this HPV test every three years, again, with the proviso that all of their pap smears in the past have been normal. So this is, of course, really too all about cutting the rates of cervical cancer, 12,000 cases of cervical right. cancer will be diagnosed this year. How else can you cut that risk? Well, this is something that you can have a major impact on in terms of your environmental and behavioral factors. Number one, limit your number of lifetime sexual partners. Consider getting the vaccine if it's an appropriate age group. Do not smoke. And again, this does not mean you don't have to see your gynecologist. You need to see your gynecologist regularly. Jen, thanks. You bet, Erica.